Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to a special video from Toy Poloi, filmed especially for Icon Icon 2021. The event runs from July the 7th through to July the 11th. There's a whole range of YouTubers and podcasters taking part. To see exactly who's involved, check out the Icon Icon website. A link to that will be in the description of this video. In the meantime, let's get on with my special 80s themed project. In this video today we're going to be looking at restoring a vintage He-Man and the Masters of the Universe Battle Ram and Sky Sled and as well as that we are going to be doing a custom version of the Sky Sled to look like Skeletor's War Sled which is something you haven't seen in the vintage uh, Masters of the Universe world. Now over the last few months as you can see I've picked up a few different uh, versions of the Battle Ram just to see what the uh, common issues are with them and it seems to be that the main ones are stickers that are always missing so that's certainly something that we're going to cover in this video and the other thing is that the uh, missile launcher tends to break and I've worked out a way that we can easily fix that and that shouldn't be a problem for uh, most people to have a go at. But let's take a closer look at these and I'll show you what the issues are. So this was the uh, first battle ram that I picked up off eBay. It didn't cost a huge amount. I think uh, generally uh, you can pick them up for under £20. Sometimes you get even luckier than that and get them for much cheaper. Uh, the thing that is always missing is actually the missiles. There should be three missiles uh, with the battle ram and it's taken me a while to find some uh, sort of extra ones of those. This one came with just one missile. Now it has this cool feature where you can eject the sort of front part of the ship and this becomes the sky sled and you see this part featured in He-Man and the Masters of the universe all the time. Uh, they're always sort of flying about on these and as I mentioned in the sort of introduction I'm going to make a custom version of this because the version that sort of attaches to this is I'm going to say a hero version so it's the sort of heroic side of Eternia but you often see Skeletor and his sort of cronies flying around on them uh, and that one is called the war sled so I want to make a custom version of that but as you can see they all look much like this. This one's got a little bit of sun damage to it and is missing all of its stickers but overall it's just a bit dirty really. There's not much else uh, sort of wrong with it. Good clean and that should come up quite nicely. Now the rear section of the battle ram this has the launcher on it and on this one that I bought when you press the button on the side you can see nothing happens. There should be a spring in this little hole here which uh, is used to eject this missile but on this one the spring is completely missing and it was a little bit disappointing when I sort of bought this that that part was missing. I was expecting it to work straight away but it doesn't and I think that can be fixed quite easily so I've ordered some springs which will uh, arrive in the next couple of days. So what I want to do is sort of get uh, the basis of this battle round working uh, before we uh, sort of fix the launcher mechanism. And as you can see again this is just looking quite dirty. It's uh, not got a great deal wrong with it. A little bit of yellowing uh, but uh, that's not too bad. It just really needs a good clean. Now you can sort out de-yellowing on some things but I found with sort of experience that de-yellowing uh, blue plastic tends to make it go a sort of frosty colour so I'm not going to bother even trying to do this. I'm just going to live with the sort of yellowing of this one. I think it looks quite nice but we do need to give everything a good clean and for that I'm just going to use hot soapy water and a toothbrush. The front portion, the sky sled, we can submerge in the water because there's no moving parts in that and nothing's going to get damaged. The rear section, it does have uh, metal axles on these wheels and this should, on most of them as I say, be a spring in there. So I don't want to submerge this. I'm just going to uh, use the toothbrush to get the hot soapy water on it and we'll clean out all of the dirt and grime of that and make it look quite nice. As you saw, I had a second one of these so I'm going to do exactly the same to that and we'll clean that one up as well. Everything always looks better after a good clean. I've now ended up with one really nice looking uh, battle round which is this one. You can see that's looking almost brand new I'd say. The one in the middle uh, has cleaned up very nicely but has a little bit of yellowing on it as I showed you earlier and then I have uh, the sort of sky sled part of one which uh, actually had loads of sort of damaged stickers on it so I've removed all of those. You can quite clearly see where the stickers were left because it's a little bit of a different shade of colour but the overall effect is it looks quite nice. So uh, now we can get on to 
fixing the spring mechanism because I've just had a packet of springs arrive. The way the firing mechanism works on this is there's a peg inside which is what uh, keeps the missile sort of straight and around that there should be a spring. You can see on this one that there is nothing. You can just see this little cross section of the peg there. If I show you this one which does actually work you can see there is a spring inside and the spring is about the same length as that sort of uh, cross piece in the middle uh, and it looks like what happens is over the years that rusts a bit or just gets caught and broken off uh, and really the problem with this is how to get that spring back in place. I've uh, sort of had a think about it. I don't want to break these toys open because all masters of the universe toys tend to be sort of sealed together and glued and I think trying to split this open to replace the spring would cause quite a lot of damage. So I've worked out a way that we can replace that spring without taking this apart. But the first thing I had to do was actually work out how big that spring needs to be and it has to be a very specific spring because it's obviously got to be big enough to go over this little cross piece and also small enough to go inside the missile section because you can see here when you push this missile in it actually goes over that post and is pushed down onto the spring so when you press the firing button if I do that now you can see it fires out with quite a lot of force. So what I've done is I've had to take some quite sort of careful measurements of that spring or as best as I could and uh, work out that how big the diameter is so that it would still sit inside this missile but how small it needs to be to still go over the peg in the middle and also its length which is actually quite awkward to work out. And I've ended up with these which is a bag of springs. Now when you buy springs there are three dimensions you need to know. Uh, the length of it is one uh, of the dimensions so you can see here this is 30 millimeters long and then the other two dimensions are the 0.6 millimeters which is how thick the wire is. Now I actually think I bought this uh, with slightly too thin a wire. If I bought it with thicker wire you'd have got a stronger spring so it might be that that number could do with being 0.8 or even one millimeter thick and then the other diameter there is that one which is nine and that is the diameter of the spring itself. So there are three key measurements you need. So this is 30 millimeters by nine millimeters and then the wire on this one is 0.6 millimeters but as I say I think it actually could do with being a bit thicker. And this is it seems to be a perfect size to fit onto this little cross section inside there. If I push this in it's a little bit awkward to do but there you go you can see that that fits over that cross section. And if I put a missile in we can lock that in place and I will fire this but you'll see straight away that the actual spring comes out as well. So that is a slight issue that this spring, although it works and it does make the missile fire, it doesn't stay in place. So I'll fire this one more time just so you can see it in action. But the uh, spring quite often fires out, which is not what we want. We need to work out a way to make the spring stay in place and stay inside the battle ram. So what I need to do is actually bend the end of this spring so that the sort of final piece of the wire, the sort of the end of the coil, is pointing inwards a bit because then when you push it onto the cross piece that's inside the battle ram it will sort of catch a, enough on there and it will hold itself in place. But obviously this stuff is quite springy metal so to bend it you actually need a couple of pairs of pliers. You need one to sort of hold it straight and then another one to bend the end and uh, we can bend it in such a way that we end up with a shape a little bit like that. It may be that I need to modify this slightly more. You just want it bent enough that when you push it over that cross piece it sort of catches and has enough friction that it will stay in place. So I'm going to bend that just a slight bit more. I think it may need to be just a little bit more sort of inwards pointing. But you can see with two pairs of pliers this is a, a relatively easy thing to do. You couldn't bend this just with your hands and one pair of pliers. You need two pairs to properly grip it. So there we go. That's the sort of shape I'm going for. And we now push that onto the cross section and see what happens. So I'm just going to use a pair of pliers again just so I can line this up. It's really quite awkward to see what you're doing and sort of get everything pushed in place. to be in. So let's try that. If I push the missile in and fire it. Yeah that seems to have caught enough. Now that is not 
wanting to go anywhere. So you can see that's the way you uh, replace the spring on this. It's a fairly straightforward job, it's just sort of getting the angles of things right. Now these springs, as I say, you can get fairly easily. I actually picked these up off of eBay. Uh, there are plenty of sellers on there. Uh, you will have to order them from China or somewhere like that because it seems that they have the best sort of options and best uh, variants of uh, all the different sizes. Uh, but just to type in spring, uh, you know, compression spring, and then type in these sizes, the 0.69 millimeters and 30 millimeters, and you'll get a few different options come up. And they take about a month to arrive, which is why I was sort of waiting for these to turn up. But it's an easy thing to do. And if you've seen some of my other videos uh, recently, I uh, supercharged a Ram Man by adding a extra large spring inside that and it really makes quite a difference and I think I may as I say come back to this and put in a larger spring so that the missile really does fly uh, when you fire the battle ram. Now that we have the missiles all working again the next thing we need to deal with is the lack of stickers. Now in my sort of files and selection of files I do actually have a scan of the sticker sheet for this toy uh, but it needs a bit of work so I'm going to take that into Photoshop, tidy it up, fix up some of the blemishes and I'll make a version that everyone can download for free on toyploy.com that will just work on this toy. So let's get that file ready to uh, be printed out. And here is the file all done and all printed. Now I've printed this onto sticky backed glossy printer paper as I feel this gives the sort of the best uh, sort of looking sticker and it makes it feel like the, the sort of the vintage look of the toy. As you can see there's quite a few stickers uh, and I'm just going to now cut those out using a pair of scissors. Now I put a grey line around all of the stickers that I sort of redesign. Uh, you need to remove that grey line as you're cutting it out and then it will fit perfectly on the toy. So let's get these stickers all cut out and put onto the battle ram and once that's done we've got an all original version we can move on to making a customized version of the sky sled and the wall sled. And there you go, that is the battle ram now with these stickers applied. Always with these toys, as soon as you add the stickers, it really does bring it to life. There's not a great deal of stickers on this one, uh, just a three on the front for this sky sled, and on the back we've got a few on the sides and then a couple on the back of it. But it really does make quite a big difference, it just looks now like a complete vehicle. And that really is it for the restoration of this battle ram. As you can see, it's a fairly simple thing to fix, a good clean. Uh, we've replaced the spring in the uh, launcher there. 
and then everything is good to go. We can still remove the front section which is the separate sky sled so that uh, Prince Adam here can fly that around and it just looks like quite a cool and interesting toy. It was something I would have loved to have had as a kid but as I said at the start of this video this is not where we're going to leave it. We now need to make a version of this sky sled and turn it into Skeletor's war sled. Here's a toy ploy top tip for you. If you uh, collect uh, Masters of the Universe figures and you pick up lots of odd ones like I do, you'll find quite often when you pick up Trapjaw, he is missing the weapon that fits into his right arm. And those are actually getting harder and harder to find. But as luck would have it, uh, Lego just happens to fit. So uh, if you've got little pieces of technical Lego and stuff lying around like I do, so here's a little uh, technical Lego pin and another Lego brick and a sort of propeller piece, you can make all sorts of fun weapons to go in uh, Trapjaw's hand and make him look a lot more complete. Uh, it saves you having to sort of track down the elusive weapons that, as I say, are getting quite expensive. And you can make some quite nice sort of interesting things. You can see here, this is just a few other Lego pieces put together and he's got a sort of laser attachment. So uh, if you've not got the weapons for your trap jaw, always have a quick search in your little Lego pile and you can make some quite interesting things. So here is the sky sled on its own. As you can see, it's really quite a nice toy. And they've actually just uh, reissued a, a modern version of this in the Origins uh, line of toys, where you can get Prince Adam just sitting on the sky sled. And it was that that actually gave me this idea for uh, making a custom version of this vintage uh, sky sled and turning it into Skeletor's war sled, because they have an option on the Origins version where you can take off these side panels and replace them with a different version, which has a different dragon on it, which is supposed to be Skeletor's dragon. I thought that was a really nice idea. So one thing I want to do is to make some complete custom stickers for this that uh, has a different design for that. There's also a big area on the back of this that looks like it could do with a sticker. So I'm going to make one sticker to go on there as well just to uh, complete it a bit more. And I may even end up painting the eyes on this so that they sort of stand out a bit. And also with the sky sled, when you turn it around on the back, this uh, is the clip that actually attaches it to the battle ram. But uh, it looks a bit dull and a bit empty. And I think with some uh, sort of careful cut of plastic and using some bits of styrene and some offcuts that I have here, I can make a little uh, set of engines that will sit in there and uh, just finish that section off. But I need to design it in such a way that it can uh, still be clipped onto the battle ram because this is quite a key piece. Obviously it's a clip and uh, it does need to work with the uh, rear section. So I'll design something that will sit in there just to finish that area off. But the first thing we need to do is design some stickers to turn this one into Skeletor's war sled. Now, I'm going to take my sort of design cues from the Origins versions because obviously Mattel have uh, gone to some effort to design those and I'm going to use that as a basis to uh, redraw these stickers and make them look like the war sled version. So let's get into Photoshop and get drawing.
after quite a lot of work and a bit of toing and froing and redesigning, this is the final design that I've come up with. So as you can see, we now have a dragon in red on the top and I've done a blue version at the bottom so you can have a couple of different variants of the war sled. As I say, this is sort of loosely based on the artwork that Mattel did. I used sort of their original drawings and sort of reworked them a bit and I've redesigned the arm a couple of times because I uh, drew it once and it just looked a bit sort of thin and weedy so I've gone back to that and redrawn it again with uh, more muscles and just to make it look a bit more aggressive. It's a very odd shape you have to get this thing to fit into so it's never going to look uh, particularly natural but I think that uh, is quite a nice sort of scale and sort of size for this uh, like dragony type thing and as you can see I've also made this which is a little sort of set of jets that will go on the very back of the uh, war sled. So let's get these uh, new stickers cut out. I've got two different uh, war sleds here and I'm going to stick them on both so we get both versions both with the red dragon and the blue dragon. And here you go, here are the new war sleds with their new custom stickers. On the left we have the original version there with Prince Adam, so that's the original sort of dragon. And then we've got the blue version of my newly drawn dragon here with a trap jaw. It does look really quite nice to have uh, different designs on the sides of these. And then on the far right here we have a Skeletor with the nice sort of bright red dragon. If I turn this one around as well you can see that I've added some little engines on the back there just with a sticker. And it's quite a nice sort of subtle difference just to to add that extra bit of detail there otherwise I do think the back of this looks particularly dull. So I've now got three nice versions. I've got the sky sled and I've got two war sleds there for Skeletor and Trapjaw but we're not finished with this uh, custom yet as I said we need to make a little engine piece to go in the back of this so uh, let's get that constructed. To make the engine part I'm just going to design something that sits inside this small area here. So I've got my ruler out and I'm going to take some measurements of uh, what exactly can fit in inside it. So you can see I can put my ruler in. It's about uh, one centimetre wide. That goes all the way up. And at the tallest point it is uh, about 2.5. So you can make 2.4 centimetres. So we can make something fairly large to go in there. There's one slight sort of issue in the fact that when you attach this to the back of the battle ram at the uh, upper clip part there's a, a little area inside. You can see, actually see where it's the two halves of the battle ram are joined together. Uh, that doesn't actually give you much room. So what I've worked out is we can make some engines uh, that the top engine can only come out about as far as the rear section of that. So that's about one centimetre. And the one at the bottom you can make come out as far as you like. So I'm going to make that sort of about one and a half centimetres just to give it some sort of protrusion so it actually sticks out and looks a bit more interesting. And to make this I've got a whole bag of scraps. These are off cuts of bits of styrene sheet uh, that I've used for other projects. So I found a small piece of that which is this one which is a one millimetre thick styrene sheet. And I've also found this in my sort of spares and parts pot. It's just a bit of plastic tube. Again it's made out of polystyrene so uh, I can use plastic weld and things like that to glue it together uh, and I think this will make uh, nice little engine pieces. So really I'm just going to get sort of cutting and shaping until I've made something that I feel sort of looks right and will do the job and um, yeah we'll see what we can make.
here we go. This is what I've managed to make. As you can see, I've made a little sort of engine piece that uh, will fit quite snugly in the back of the sky sled. I've actually made a couple of them just because I wasn't really sure what sort of design I wanted to go for. This is a quite simplistic one just with a couple of bits of tubing and I put a couple of little panels on either, on either side of the main jet just to make it look a bit bigger. And then on this one, I added a few bits of detail just around the end of it to make it look more like an exhaust. And then uh, the one you saw me make, the sort of a similar idea, but just putting the exhaust piece is sort of further down uh, and the end results though look really quite nice. I've given them a quick coat of paint just using a silver sharpie and I've actually dropped some black paint inside the uh, sort of engine holes just to make those look a little bit darker but I think they look really quite nice so uh, let's put one of these inside a sky sled. I'll uh, bring in one of them. I've got a couple as you know so I'm going to bring in I think I'll put it on that sort of greeny damaged one. Well, let's add that. All I've done is I've stuck a bit of a uh, double-sided tape on there. It's actually one of those double-sided sticky pads so that I can just drop this in the back of uh, the sky sled and then if I ever want to remove it uh, I can easily do that because it's only just stuck in with some tape. So I'll stick that in like that. There you go. We've now got little engines on the back of the sky set. I actually think that looks really quite nice. It's uh, quite a simple thing to do and it's a sort of non-permanent modification to the sky sled but it does add quite a lot of detail. Let's add one of the others. So uh, I think I, I like that one the best out of the other two that I've made. Again just a double-sided pad on there and we can uh, push that inside the back here and stick it in place. Yeah that's really quite convincing. Now we need to check though that these still actually fit on the uh, main part of the battle ram so let's do that. So this is the rear part of the battle ram and here is one with the new engine piece stuck in place and we can slip that on and it still clips on really quite nicely so it does everything I wanted. We'll check the other one as well I think this is a, a different version this might be a Spanish or uh, yeah this is a Spanish version of the sky sled. These are actually sometimes a bit tighter to fit in the uh, rear part it clips in a bit more forcefully but as you can see that clips in quite nicely so uh, yeah both of those work really well. So I now have a good version of the battle ram and an evil version of the battle ram with the war sled on the front but we are missing one final thing for Skeletor's war sled version and that is an appropriate missile to go with it. Now very kindly friend of the channel Kristen Abbott said that he would cast me some uh, versions of the missiles in whatever colour I wanted. He's made a silicon mould of an original missile and can then cast it in any colour. So I said to him can I have them in green because that seems sort of fitting and he said well even better than that I can do them in glow in the dark green. So he sent me a few of these. I've actually got a box with a few more in and these are glow in the dark green versions of the battle ram missile. So we can put one of those in Skeletor's battle ram. So now he now has customised missiles. I've also managed to pick up a few more. I bought some uh, from a Facebook group and I need to say a massive thank you again to uh, Peter Ghost who uh, very kindly sent me one of these and you'll see that in a previous video. So I've now got a selection of missiles so it seems very fitting that we now go out and have a battle of the battle rams. There we have it. As you can see everything is back up and working. You can have quite a nice fight between two battle rams and now I've got the good version and also the evil version. It really makes for quite a, a sort of fun afternoon as you saw. The sticker files for both of these projects are available from toyploy.com. You can get the original stickers for free so go there and uh, check out those. There's also a whole load of other Masters of the Universe stickers and stickers for other toy projects available on toyploy.com so go and have a good rummage around and see what you can find. If you've enjoyed this video then hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and also go and check out what's going on with the rest of Icon Icon as I've mentioned the link for that is in the description of this video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.